When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things, and then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, I, that's, big that, that's better. We're getting better. Uh, people who are familiar with the song probably noticed we skipped over girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes. <laughs> we don't want to get in trouble with our wives. not be appropriate. This is Pastor Jolly John Lekumski and Pastor Matt Youngblood Clark. And this is Wrestling, Wrestling with, with the, the basics, basics, our favorite things. And we're back to you, Matt. So okay, what, is, good. what is one of your favorite things about During Christmas? These 12 days of Christmas, I'm going to focus on uh, something that we might hear in church on that Sunday following Christmas. If we come Ooh. to worship, this might be the gospel coming reading. Up, coming up. Yeah, yep. that's right. Um, so following Christmas Day, looking at the Gospel of Luke, 40 days later, we hear this account where we meet one of my favorite people named Simeon. Simeon, all right? So, wasn't there at the manger, but but not long after we encounter Simeon. So, Luke chapter 2, uh, beginning with verse 22. Uh, a good reminder, it doesn't have to be at the manger. It can be at the manger, but there's other places you can run into this baby too. That's right. Uh, so, and when the time came for their purification, that's Mary and Joseph and the baby. Actually, I guess it's just Mary and the baby. They're mm-hmm. the ones that need to be purified, according to the law of Moses. They brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer sacrifice, according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves are two young pigeons. Now, there was a, Do you want me to keep going? Well, yeah, then, well, real All quick. Right. Just, it's kind of interesting. They're coming to give the, these turtle doves and pigeons, yeah. these birds, and they're, they're really not the preferred sacrifice. No, this is, that's the minimum. This is kind of the minimum, and, and I think it's pretty safe to assume that means that the Mary and Joseph, it's not that they were being stingy and didn't want to give to the Lord what they could, but this is all they had. Yep. That, that they they are a, a poor couple that is displaced from their home in Nazareth and are in Bethlehem right now and now coming to the temple in Jerusalem. And, and this is all they have to give. It's okay to give this must, but this is kind of like minimum. Well, and frankly, if they had money, do you think they would have laid the baby in a manger? I don't think so. Money would have talked. They yeah, maybe they would. Maybe room. suddenly room would have opened up at the end. <laughs> yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> so, okay, now we meet Simeon, all right? Uh, verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. All right. Isn't that a cool promise that that God makes this promise to Simeon, that that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ, that before he died, before his life on this world, world came to an end that he would see the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, and here he sees him. Isn't that beautiful? It is. And the first thing Simeon does is he scoops Jesus up in his ah! arms. I think that's just such a great picture. It is. This little baby Jesus, this this infant holding him in his arms, and I can just imagine how Simeon's face must have been beaming with joy to see with his own eyes the Lord's promise fulfilled in this little yep. child. Yeah. Yeah. And so he bursts out into song and says, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace. And now your promise has been fulfilled. Simeon sees God as faithful. He's seen the Savior. Now he says, Lord, I'm ready to depart in peace. And I think he's talking about departing even this world in peace. Yep. Uh, knowing that he has seen the Lord's Christ, Simeon's Savior and our Savior. One of the reasons my favorite things is because oftentimes in worship, we're reminded of this. We we sing what's called the Nunc Dimittis. We right? do. At the Every end of the, time we celebrate yeah. the Lord's Supper. So after communion, before we depart from the, the Lord's house, um, we sing the Nunc Dimittis. We see the words of Simeon. Now you're letting your servant depart in peace. And it's because we've encountered Jesus. He's encountered us. We, we've held him in our hands in the Lord's Supper. We've received him. His promise is fulfilled. And so now we recognize we're ready to depart the Lord's house in peace, to depart worship in peace. But also, really, in a way, even to part this world in peace, knowing yeah. that we are forgiven and life and salvation is ours through that same Savior, savior of Simeon. And isn't it cool to think we get to do the exact same thing that Simeon did every time we take the Lord's Supper. We get to hold the Lord Jesus in our hands. We're in his presence. What a great thing. And that's why it's one of my favorite, favorite things. things. Merry Christmas from Wrestling, Wrestling with, with the, the Basics. basics.